Has your local gym closed? Are you sick of membership fees? Get ready to work out in your pajamas, ladies, because today we're talking about what equipment you need to get a kick butt workout in the comfort of your home, no matter your budget. Are you done with being that pregnant or postpartum mom in the gym who is always stuck on the sidelines feeling horrible, saying, how come no one ever told me this? Are you ready to finally say no to a mom life filled with excess weight, injury, overwhelm, and fatigue? Then help is here. Welcome to the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast, where we dive deep into the information you need to be the strongest woman in and out of the gym, even if you are a mom. If you are done going through your pregnancy or postpartum fitness journey clueless and unprepared, if you are ready to commit and say yes to being that badass fit mom who is shredded and stronger than before the baby, well, listen up. Because this is where we talk about all of the things your doctor or trainer never told you about so that you can achieve the body you want and take your athletic strength and performance to the next level. Get ready, because here's your host, Daisy Bravo. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Daisy Bravo, and I want to welcome you today with like the biggest air hug. The episode today is kind of a long time coming. I get this question all the time, and I find that this is the biggest burden on people when starting a workout routine from home. And yes, I am talking about home workout equipment. Now, if you're listening to this podcast and you are in the market for gym equipment, listen up because this podcast episode could save you some time, money, and frustration. I have also made this podcast episode into a YouTube video and an in-depth blog post. If you want more of a visual experience, check that out. I also have links where you can check out and even purchase these items if you wish. So let's dive in and talk about workout equipment. Workout equipment is kind of a difficult investment for a lot of people to make. And I think the big reason for this is that like fear that whatever you buy is going to turn into another clothes rack or end up growing cobwebs in your basement. So I really understand the hesitation when it comes to spending money on gym equipment. I have certainly purchased my fair share of useless crap. And today I wanted to help make your decision easier and organize equipment into different categories for you based upon importance and expense. So before I give you a running list of what you need and don't need, I want to chat a little bit about mistakes people make when buying gym equipment. Now, mistake number one, you don't have a plan. This is why things end up in your gym equipment graveyard. You're not sure what kind of training you want to do or even what you enjoy. So after eating a bag of Doritos and chasing it down with a pint of ice cream Saturday night on impulse, you decide that the Tony Little Gazelle is exactly what you need. And this is a recipe for an expensive clothing rack. Rack. So you want to make sure that you've got some sort of plan in mind before you actually go and purchase things. What exercises do you like to do? What type of training do you want to do? Are you more of a cardio person? Are you more of a resistance training person? You really have to put that into consideration and also think about your goals. Is your goal to build muscle? Is your goal to tone up, lose fat? This is all going to have an impact impact on what equipment that you choose. Now, mistake number two is that you go ultra cheap. And 
I'm all in for saving a buck, but when buying equipment, even if it's just a set of resistance bands, you may be the person that has the tendency to scour Amazon or Walmart for the cheapest item, and that is definitely not a great idea. I am not talking about getting a great piece of used equipment at a killer price. I am talking about choosing a good quality piece of equipment over something that is just going to break shortly after using it. And I see this mainly in cardio equipment. And let's say you're a serious runner. So maybe you love to do sprints and maybe you decide you need a treadmill for rainy or snowy days. So you go out and you buy the cheapest treadmill you can find. And some of them don't even have motors. So if you're planning on doing sprints, you want to make sure that the machine that you're buying has such a motor that can handle those sprinting speeds and not many of them do at that cheaper price point. Mainly they're made for just walking. So this machine can't handle the intensity you want to train at and you never end up using it except to dry your clothes on. So going ultra cheap is actually a waste of money in a case like this. All right. Mistake number three. You look for the machine that does it all. So you've seen those multi-exercise do-it-all machines. And while I would love to do 100 exercises with just one machine, in my experience, these machines also end up in the gym equipment graveyard. In theory, they're great. But have you actually tried to do a 30 or 60 minute workout with them? The biggest problem with these multi-exercise machines is that you spend more time switching attachments, remembering the configurations, and adjusting all these moving parts. A multi-machine can get you a great workout, but be sure to do your research first and make sure it is easy to transition from exercise to exercise. It's like a restaurant menu with way too many items. You end up feeling like a deer in headlights, not knowing what to do next, and then your workout is a total wash. All right, number four, you don't actually have enough weight to progress your workouts. Now, how do you make gains in the gym and build muscle and rehab injuries? Well, you need to progress. You need to start working at a load and heavier loads as you go on. So making your workouts more and more intense is important. And that's why doing shoulder raises with the same weight day in and day out will never get you the results that you are looking for. Your muscles need to be challenged. You need to feel that burn in order for these muscles to build and grow. They need to be broken down so that they can build themselves stronger and stronger. So if your home gym is just too pink three pound dumbbells, you're not going to see the results that you're looking for. You're going to plateau and you're just going to think that this does not work. <laughs> that exercise is not for you no matter what you do. So now that you know some of the mistakes made when buying gym equipment, I wanted to go through different equipment at different price ranges to help you make better decisions. And before I even jump into those store items, I wanted to talk to you about helpful items that you may already have around the house. I really love using a backpack in my training, and it's kind of one of the most versatile pieces of home equipment. You can add books, you can add other household items into the backpack, and you can keep making it heavier and heavier. So this is actually great as a kettlebell substitute or even great to use if you're doing things like leg exercises, like squats or lunges, you can really get creative here. Now, laundry jugs are really cool too. You can save those and fill it up with, you know, water or sand and really get an intense workout. 
from just a jug. So also some random things like bungee cables, books, cans, ropes, chains, PVC pipes, laundry baskets, buckets, paper plates. You can use those as rug sliders. These are just some ideas that can spark some creativity for you. And although it might not be pretty, you can get super creative and have a decent workout with these items that you have just laying around. And when you're ready, then you can make some financial investments to better equipment. So let's take it up a notch and start building a gym. I'm going to break things down into kind of a good, better, and best. And all of this is on my website under episode 12 with the podcast. So you'll definitely want to check out the resources on the page there. And I also have a link in the show notes here of where you can find some of these items. I even have a guide that you can download right on the the blog post. So if you're on a budget, any basic yoga mat will do. You'll be able to do a lot of different exercises with just a mat. Benches are really awesome to have, but can also get really expensive. So a good alternative to a bench is a Swiss ball and you can use it for so many exercises. It is really a multifunctional piece of equipment that you can use for core mobility and stability exercises also. So it's really a great thing to have in your arsenal. It is really versatile. Just make sure again, you're getting a good quality ball. You're not getting something cheap that you're going to sit on and is going to pop in the next day or so. The next important item is resistance bands and making sure that you're getting the right resistance. And this is where people tend to get it wrong. Remember mistake number four, which was not having enough resistance to progress. But I also want to mention the obvious, that some muscle groups that you work are just naturally stronger than others and will need heavier weight so that they get challenged. So your leg exercises will need heavier weight than let's say an exercise for your biceps. So a five pound set of dumbbells is really not going to get you far. And that is why I love resistance bands. You can do pretty much any exercise and they come in so many different levels of tension. It makes it really affordable and especially easy on space when you compare something like a rack of dumbbells or maybe some barbells or even some plates. So a good multi-resistance band set is so doable for everyone. And I love these also for traveling and staying on my routine when I am out of town. Now, another amazing affordable tool is a doorway pull-up bar. So you can do things like ab exercises, arm exercises, and you can even do a lot of back exercises. You can even use your resistance band wrapped around your pull-up bar and do things like lat pull-downs. You can really get creative with the variety of exercises. So on my website, I have a list of everything that I use and I've tested and regularly have in my arsenal, use daily, and that I love. So check out those links and you'll have basically everything that you need to get full body resistance workouts. You'll have everything that you need to challenge each and every muscle group so that your muscles can grow, progress, and build. All right. Now, if you have a little extra money and want to kick things up a notch, I recommend getting yourself an adjustable weight bench and a wide range of dumbbells. Now, I personally love the Bowflex Select Dumbbells because I am working with a really 
small space. Now, the only downside of those is that it does take time when I'm switching my weights between reps and sets. So keep that in mind that it may slow you down as opposed to having a nice rack full of different dumbbell weights. It's going to be so much quicker just to grab and go from exercise to exercise. But having a wide range of dumbbells is really the best option when it comes to increasing your strength, um, allowing you to progress and build those stronger muscles, because you're constantly going to be able to challenge yourself every single day. And finally, if you want that kick butt pro garage style gym, you are going to need to invest in a really great barbell and a variety of weight plates and some sort of squat rack that will allow you to do heavy squats as well as a chest press. And having all of these pieces of equipment will allow you to maximize many exercises in a small space. The only time consuming part here again will be adjusting those weight plates. Now, if you're still convinced that you need a multi-gym machine, make sure you do research and see what is involved in changing out all the attachments. Because for the most part, those take much longer than just switching a few plates around. Now, I can suggest other pieces of equipment for you to buy. Things like a pulley machine is awesome to have, or a smith rack is even more awesome to have if you want to get into some heavier and heavier lifts. But if you're looking for a minimalist solution to maximize your workouts, this is pretty much all you need to have for a fully functional home gym. Now, before I leave you, I also want to talk about cardio equipment. And depending on your fitness goals, it's always nice to have one solid piece of good equipment for days when the weather is too yucky, or maybe it's just too dark outside. Uh, whatever the situation may be, it is always great to have a good piece of cardio equipment. My biggest advice when purchasing cardio equipment is to invest in something that is, again, of good quality and something that you'll be able to grow into. Spending the money on a motor-free treadmill so that you can save a few bucks will ultimately end up in your next garage sale. I can guarantee it. So take the time to figure out what kind of cardio you actually want to do and find a piece of equipment that meets those demands and allows you to progress and push the machine as you get stronger and faster. Now, if you are not ready to drop a couple of thousand on some cardio equipment, I do have a few tips on a few ways to save. And of course, first off, always look at some garage sales, things like Facebook Marketplace or even Craigslist. Second, post on your own Facebook and ask, hey, friends, family, does anyone have some used equipment that you want to get rid of? Chances are you have some friends or family members that have some things collecting dust in their basement that they would love to give you for free. Now, as more and more gyms are closing, you will find that some locations are starting to sell some of that equipment. So reach out to some local gyms in your area. If you see some going out of business signs, would definitely reach out to them and see if you can purchase some of their old equipment. Number four is something that I did, and it is repurposing an old bicycle. And I have this really awesome road bike, and I never use it anymore because I've switched to mountain biking. So instead of buying a spin bike or a Peloton, I just ended up buying a stand for my old road bike. And it's pretty much like having a new spin bike. And I sit on that thing for hours and I can adjust tension and it's really a great workout. Now, number five is if cardio equipment isn't the 
in the budget, grab a jump rope or start dancing. That is a cheap and easy way to get some really great cardio in. So hopefully this has been helpful and has you excited about starting a home gym. Now, remember, it is not necessary to buy everything at once. Start with a few pieces of equipment and build as you need. Start with just a few weight plates. And as you notice yourself getting stronger, just order some more. Before you know it, you will have a home gym that you are proud of and gives you amazing results all without the commute. I would love to hear what pieces of home equipment you love and can't live without. So feel free to send me a DM. And I want to thank you again for listening to another episode of the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. I hope you check out the show notes and my website if you have any questions or if you want to check out the equipment I've mentioned on the show. Have a great day and I'll see you next week on another episode of the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. Bye! Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time on the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. Now remember, go subscribe so that you are the first to know as soon as new episodes drop. Also, be sure you don't miss out on your chance to win a free program of your choice from Strong Moms Fitness. All you have to do is leave a five-star review, screenshot it before you submit, and send it to daisy at strongmomsfitness.com. Your review helps other people find our show. And as a thank you, once a month, we choose the review that makes us all warm and tingly inside and award that lucky lady a free program of their choice. So do it now. It could be you. See you next time, you badass mom you.